We're coming to you a little bit different today. Uh, sunny California, out here with a beautiful sunset. Uh, we're gonna talk about some dive knives. Yeah, this one is my baby. As soon as I saw this one, I knew I had to have it. Hey guys, how's it going? We're coming to you a little bit different today. Uh, sunny California, out here with a beautiful sunset. We're gonna try to get through these knives before we lose that. But I'm standing here with uh, Luke Immel. How you doing? Good. Good, good? Yep. And uh, we're gonna talk about some dive knives. Now Luke's here, because a while ago we had a, um, we had a giveaway on Instagram. If you send in a picture of out in the wild images and you could potentially win a Benchmade 940, Luke's the one who won it. Uh, what do you do, Luke? How did you win that? Uh, that was a picture that I, well, it was actually a picture I stole out of a video. Yeah. So that, <laughs> I might have cheated a little bit. But uh, it's still an um, image. <laughs> Still an image. That was a picture. Uh, we were doing some diving up north, uh, Northern California, and that was a picture of a uh, fish hunter with a nice ling cod that I had. Cool. So it was an underwater shot. It was pretty cool. Now, when he says diving, a lot of you might be thinking scuba because today we're actually talking about diving knives. Um, but he actually free dives and, is, and, and fishes with a spear. Uh, so it's pretty cool stuff. So anyways, let's jump into these knives. We're gonna start with the Schrade Water Rat. Now, all of these knives have been in the water today. We went out diving earlier, had a lot of fun, uh, got some footage, got some stuff, it was good stuff. Um, so when I pull this blade out, a lot of you are gonna cringe, but we have something to talk about. <laughs> oh, so here's the Schrade. That's one day in the water. Now, this is made out of uh, just a standard stainless steel, steel blade here. It's got a line cutter on it, it's got a pry on this side, and it's got a tap and a pry on the back. Now the thing with this is this knife runs about 10 bucks. This is a very, very common dive knife. There's a lot of guys dive with stuff like this. And as you can see, if you take it out in the ocean, you don't rinse it off, it's going to get some oxidation, some rust on it. The way stainless steel works is they add 10% or more chromium and a bunch of other rad stuff, depending on the stainless. And uh, it gives a kind of a layer of oxidation, a little layer of protection on the blade. Now, Luke, when we were talking, so I've got some scuba diving experience, mm -hmm. and when I saw this, I was like, I'm an idiot, I didn't rinse it off, but we dove pretty remote today, and you were mentioning that with free diving, you dive remote a lot, and washing yeah. a blade off's not, usually not an option, right? Yeah, not always, not, I mean, yeah. Most places that, uh, that I dive at are, tend to be pretty remote, and so when you come out of the water in a remote location, there's no hose, there's no pier like we're standing on, so, a lot of our gear just gets thrown in our bags and our trucks and uh, away we go. Sometimes it's a four hour drive, you never know. So right. it, yeah, could be that, a, it could be a while. And that nice, it's been only been three or four hours yeah. and that nice already got that. Now, yeah. you can take it, clean it up, no problem, keep diving with it. Now this knife again, it runs right around 10 bucks and uh, that's a really common dive knife. And that's, that's we're gonna show you guys some higher end, nicer stuff here. So the next one that we have is the Fox Techno. It's got a kind of a pressure system release here that you just push up and pull out. Now with this knife, this is made out of uh, an Enix stainless. Uh, some of you guys might recognize that st style of stainless steel as uh, being on some Opinel models. Some of the Opinel knives use the Enix stainless steel. Um, now with this knife, there's no line cutter here, but you, it is a dagger edge. You have serration on this side. You have a, a finish on this side. Zach, is that a, a sharpened edge on that one? This is a sharpened edge. So it's on a double edge. Yep, double edge. I like that. And then uh, tank tapper here. Uh, now, you don't use tank tappers or noisemakers with free diving very much, do you? Uh, no. Okay. Nope. So with scuba diving, when we what we do with this generally is you can use this, reach back, tap your tank, and that noise will move through the water really, really far, and that can let a buddy know. I need help or hey, pay attention to me or let's go up. Um, so tank tapper is a really important thing with a lot of dive knives for scuba diving. Um, now, if you yeah. were to take this knife, we went out today, um, we didn't get to use this one specific for catching any fish. Uh, it was pretty rough waters. <laughs> but if you were gonna it use this knife. It was an ideal. <laughs> yeah, what would, you, what would you have to say about this knife if you're gonna use well, this? <clears throat> this looks like something that you could use if you're spear fishing. Um, Mostly your knife, if you're spear fishing, is is going to be for dealing with fish. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you become entangled or something, you need to cut something. You got your knife. You have yeah. to have that. But usually, when we shoot a fish, most of the time the fish isn't dead. So um, 
unless you're a really good shot and you get a brain shot and you stone the thing, then yeah, which that does happen. But most yeah. of the time, you're gonna get that fish and you're gonna wanna kill it right away. Right. So that's where the knife comes in, goes in the head, you rock it a little bit. It's as fast and, you know. Painless as possible. Painless as possible. Cool. Um, now, so that's where the double edge and the pointiness you actually, okay. you actually brought up a great point that I forgot to mention. A lot of us have misconceptions that when you scuba dive, and I think this is probably from like James Bond movies and Batman movies, <laughs> but when you scuba dive or you free dive, you're always fighting a kraken or you're always fighting a shark. But the reality is, guys, yeah. these knives aren't meant for self-defense at all in the water. They're meant purely as tools to help you. Think about it like, a, like an airbag in your car or a seatbelt in your car. You don't always need it, but when you do need it, you're glad you have it. <laughs> All right, next one yeah. up. Now, Luke, you got some experience with these guys. This is the, uh, oh, yeah. the Spider Cool Salt series. This is actually some of Luke's favorite, I think it's his favorite, right out of the pocket. <laughs> his favorite knife, his favorite steel. Uh, this one is the Pacific, runs right around 80, 90 bucks, and a uh, great knife, H1 Steel. We've got a great video on the Salt series you guys can check out. One disadvantage to this knife, this is more of a backup knife if you were diving because um, if you have gloves on, you don't want to have to try to open that up if you're getting caught in line or kelp or something like that. Um, but you use these not just for diving, but use them on your boat too, right? Yeah, so I, I am a huge fan of the H1 steel. Um, I do a lot of boat fishing, a lot of kayak fishing, a lot of diving. And these folders are good in the boat because you're in a boat. And uh, I found that the steel is what they say it is to be, which is almost or maybe even 100% rust and corrosion proof. I've used a handful of these for uh, years now, and I won't even rinse them off. Yeah. I'll, I'll use them, um, blood, salt water. Um, and you rinse them with salt water, right? Yeah, you yeah. Tell me so that. <laughs> we just dip them over the side of the boat, rinse them. Yeah and put them away wet, wet most Leave of the Leave them on times. the boat, no problem. Yeah, and I haven't had any that have showed any signs of rust or corrosion. Pretty cool stuff. That is, that's way cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that's right from everyday use, hard use, and he, he does he does rinse them, but he rinses them with salt water, so he's he's double dipping there, and they're still good. Sometimes <laughs> I'll take them home and clean them, but yeah, you, you know. don't really need to, so it's like... It's great. Yeah, but that one's a folder. I probably wouldn't dive with that. Yeah, I, I do know guys... Free scuba, dive. Anyways. I know scuba guys that will dive with this, yeah. uh, with a folder, but they actually have their fixed blade as well. And it's the yeah. whole idea, one is none, two is one, right? Sure, oh, Just yeah. in case. Yeah. So this is a backup that they'll put inside of their flotation device that they can get to in a, in a pinch. Um, Good move. And, and no tank tapper here. You'll notice no tank tapper. I mean, I guess you could take this and tap it on the tank, but it's better to have a, a solid, more solid grip. Next up, we've got the Benchmade H2O. I actually really like this knife a lot. It's got a line cutter on it. It's got a uh, pry, uh, pry end here. It's got a pry end here, line cutter here, some serration, and it's got the uh, just a regular blade there. So this kind of covers a lot of uh, what you're going to be needing a knife for anywhere in the water, unless you're fishing or you know you're free diving and fishing that way. Mm -hmm. No, no pointy end, right? No point means <laughs> in my mind it goes kind of straight to like a scuba straight diving. Straight to scuba. Knife. Yeah. A lot of people like to just sightsee and take pictures underwater. So yeah. that kind of stuff is probably Great really for good that. for them. And we got a pry yeah. bar slash tank tapper on the back end. Um, and then this, uh, the sheath here actually comes with holes and there's some rubber, nice rubber strap. You can strap to your leg, strap it to your arm, wherever you're comfortable strapping. And this is actually made out of a, a Bowler N680 steel. And the Bowler steel is, H1 is the benchmark when it comes to a stainless. Would you agree with that? Um, I'm not a steel expert, yeah. but in my in your experience, experience, absolutely. Perfect, yeah. Yep. And so this Bowler N680, it comes dang close to that H1. Um, they add in some nitrogen, they add in some cobalt, they add in a bunch of fancy stuff, and it makes this a really, really great steel. And the, another great thing about this is, 
you won't get any chipping of the blade. You'll get more of a roll in the blade because of the way that Bowler does this. Um, and speaking of chipping, there's a lot of people that might be asking themselves at this point, oh, there's no ceramic knives or there's, there's no uh, titanium knives. And the reason is, is because those knives chip and are horrible to put an edge on. I don't know if you've ever tried, but they are the mm -hmm. worst. And so that's why we don't have any here because we didn't want to feature any knives that I personally wouldn't dive with or something that you wouldn't at least try out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, next up, we've got the Spyderco Fish Hunter. And Luke, I'm gonna let you talk about this one because this one's your baby, right? Okay, yeah, this one is my baby. As soon as I saw this one, um, I knew I had to have it. And uh, I, I could tell right away just the shape and the design was had spear fishing written all over it. Um, so I picked one up, I've used it quite a bit. I've killed quite a few fish with it and um, it worked extremely well. This blade is so pointy and so thin. You get, this isn't an edge, this is a false edge. Yeah. Um, you were saying though, was this the one that you were saying you were thinking about? I, maybe I, seeing if you could put an edge on yeah, it just to so do it, right? I thought maybe uh, it might be kind of cool to see if someone could turn that into a, a real edge. Yeah. Um, but it works so well as a false edge, it would almost be unnecessary. Yeah. I thought, it might be kind of cool to have a plain edge on one side and serrations on the, other. on the other. And that would be kind of that would be kind of cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I really like those serrations. And this is something that the knife world generally, and you're you're a pretty serious knife guy. You guys have probably already seen yeah. Luke's collection. I'm I'm sure we'll have shown it by now. If not, we'll show it right here. <laughs> um, I do love knives. Yeah, and and as you know, most <laughs> knife guys they hate serrations generally on not their me. knives, but not you, and not in these situations, especially nope. when you're you're cleaning a fish, you're cutting gills, that type of thing, that serration is a really great thing to have. Yeah, I mean, it just works well. It's like designed for cutting and that's what it does. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> a partially serrated blade is fantastic, in my opinion, for something that you want to use. Best of both worlds. Yeah, best like of both it. worlds, it's meant for using, so I like a good it. one. All right, so last on the list, guys, we've got the Hogue EXFO2 is what it's called. Um, it's got this cool neoprene um, leg strap here, as you can see, we took the straps off to try to make it cleaner for camera, but we left one on on accident. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's a cool little thing. We're actually gonna feature this sheath in just a second. Now this is out of a, a 440 stainless. So it's just a good classic tried and true stainless, full tang, no tank tapper, no line cutter. Um, but it is a really, really good knife. It feels good in a gloved hand. You get a really good purchase on that. Um, and then, you know, great edge retention with that 440 stainless on it. One thing that I really personally love about this knife is that it will go in its ambi. So it doesn't matter which way you put the knife in, it's gonna go in, it's gonna be secure. And to be honest, when I'm scuba diving at least, that's a huge thing for me. Um, do you ever find with the with the fish hunter that sometimes you, oh, I, I put it in the wrong way, you put it the other way? Or? I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you just kinda gotta get used to that. Totally. But, but I think that's a really cool feature too. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Either ambi way. I think is, is neat to be able to do, that, especially yeah. in the water where you're not yeah. able to pay real close attention sometimes. Well, usually what I end up having to do with this one is in my wetsuit, this part goes in a pocket. Yeah. And so when I pull it out, this is kind of submerged in the pocket. So usually what I have to do when I put it back is I'll come to the surface and, and generally I'll, I'll have my other hand free at that point. That way I can kind of peel my pocket and look and get it and in there. And carefully get in without if I was trying to do this, shanking your leg or yeah, cutting, if your, I was trying cutting to do your wetsuit. In and out, like it might be kind of hard. Awesome. All right. Well guys, we're running out of light here, um, but that's all of our knives. I do think though that I forgot to mention some pricing here. So Benchmade H2O, right around 100. The Spyderco Fish Hunter, right around 110. And then the Hogue uh, EXFO2, right around 130 is what you're looking at for those blades there. Um, so that's all we've got for you guys. I don't know if any of you guys like to dive, if any of you guys fish hunt, if any of you guys go scuba diving, but if you do, these are some great knives to have in your quiver. So thanks so much, Luke, for coming out and being right, with us. Jack. Thanks for taking us diving today. It was a great time. Yeah, good time. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cool.